and you thought it was on an all men's organization, didn't you? <laughs> um, I, when I left Nashville, Tennessee this morning, I had no idea what a treat I was in for in, with this last concert. What an inspiration. I cannot tell you how wonderful um, or how wonderful I uh, felt as I sat there and almost made me want to jump back into the classroom. <laughs> almost. <laughs> um, the Burjok Harmony Society uh, is now stationed. It's an international organization um, set up for um, not just as a membership organization, but is now an um, quite a force for an outreach organization. And our new, uh, it's not really new, I'd say it's about three years old. Our program is just now in its infant stages. We became terribly involved with ACDA and NAFME uh, about that many years ago. And uh, it's developing so that we're not just a membership organization, but that we are outreaching to the music educators. And it is one of the most wonderful things I have ever been involved with. I retired once and came back into it because this is so exciting. Education, music educators are just the best people in the world to work with, and music students as well. But anyway, we are so glad to be here and representing the Barbershop Harming Society at ICDA this week. Um, there is, a, we have a booth. We'd like for you to come by. There is, uh, we're going to have quite a bit of music to give away to you tomorrow. Um, and not just at the booth, but also at uh, one of our reading sessions tomorrow. We have a packet of 10 pieces of music, so please come by and see us. Uh, Paul Wigley, who is a distinguished former Iowa uh, music educator, is going to be doing curriculum and repertoire in one of the sessions as well. So we want you to come by and meet him if you have not, because um, I think he's going to be extremely interesting in that. Um, I'm going to cut this a little shorter because I wanted to go, I want to tell you about the quartet that's coming up. <laughs> they are um, an, an unusual quartet, let's put it that way. Um, they're going to actually, um, it's when you say it's not your, you're not your grandfather's quartet or not your father's quartet, this is really not true because they have a long legacy with family in Barbershop. So we'd like you to welcome Brad, Mark, Dave, and Jared Boardwalk. Time, man, a part-time 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, uh, um, we get a chance to travel around quite a bit. And uh, we get to get a chance to get to know folks a lot like yourself, amazing folks. You know, just, it's about a year and a half ago, we were down in South Florida visiting some folks for the weekend. And uh, we did some, uh, we did a, um, it was a vocal summit and a harmony summit, and it was just a blast. And they said, you know, come out a little early. We'll take you out on the boat. We'll do some deep sea fishing. So we thought it was great. So we, 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 went, we went down a, a day early and went out on the boat. And, you know, we had everything. We brought our instruments. We were having a fabulous time. They brought all kinds of food. And, you know, about five hours later, we weren't catching anything. I mean, nothing. So I'm looking around, I look down in this little minnow bucket in the side of the boat. There are these minnows in there, they're, they're hardly, hardly moving, hardly moving at all. Anemic. So I take this little bottle of Jamaican... Is that the word you're looking for? Yes, anemic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I look over this little bottle of Jamaican rum in the corner and I pop the cork. And I pour a little in there, see what happens. Pretty, a little bit later, these minnows start churning up the water, really start churning up the water. So I, I take this live minnow, I put them on the hook and I throw them overboard. Five minutes later, I had a fish. It had to be three feet long. Three feet long. This minnow had him right by the throat. <laughs> no, but ser seriously, as a member of Boardwalk, obviously we love barbershop. We, uh, we were all raised by our parents, our aunts and uncles, and our, our grandparents in this. Everyone was raised by their parents. What the hell was that? How about that? <laughs> You know, but so. Well, my parents take a barbershop, but that's the differentiator. No more heckling. No more heckling. <laughs> but seriously, we have an opportunity to have uh, a lot of different influences from a lot of different uh, genres. And uh, we'd like to do a tune for you now. Um, when we were down in South Florida, actually, this is this is the true part of that story. We uh, we were introduced to a we were introduced to a tune that was that was we were told was a uh, a traditional Caribbean folk tune. So we uh, we love the tune. It's a beautiful tune. We'd like to do it for you now. It was first recorded by the great Harry Belafonte. A great tune called Jamaican Farewell.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Wonderful, wonderful job on that, Mark. A couple of things I would have done differently. Uh, but there's not, this isn't the time or place to talk about that. Well, I'm just saying, you know, some of the high notes could have been a little higher. Uh, but anyway, anyway, we'll talk later about this. You know, you know what it is. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it's the, the first song we did. We came out here. Yeah. We did that first song. It's a great song about a full-time job. We've arranged you this great solo, and you, and you chose to whistle throughout the entire solo. You know, these are music educators. They aren't whistlers. You know, that's not what they do. You, know, you can't just whistle all the way through life like that. It's not the way we do it. We're singers. And that's what we should do. We should just sing. Well, listen, I mean, a couple of people even clapped for his whistling. They liked it. That was a golf clap. That was a very polite clap. That was a sympathetic clap. That's what they did. <laughs> Stupid whistler. Listen, I think, it's, I think it's time for a change of pace. What do you think? What do you think? Less uh, whistling, baby. Yeah. Uh, did, did you all get a, a piece of music out there? Yeah. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to play and sing this thing. There's a... Uh, who, who didn't get one? Raise your hand if you didn't get one. Great, well, just come down here and share with me. I'll come. No? All right. All right, so uh, they're going to they're gonna fly it up here. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we've got, this is a, a piece um, made available from the Barbershop Harmony Society. And uh, it was uh, from this, uh, this show. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Pitch Perfect, you ever heard of that, that thing? Of course, we've all heard of that thing. It's a blockbuster. Uh, Pitch Perfect 2 just came out. Deke Sharon uh, is a big part of that movie and uh, does a lot of the vocal arrangements. Well, he, he uh, collaborated with one of our Barbershop Harmony Society uh, arrangers and put this together. And so uh, go ahead and, and roll it and they can hear it once and then we'll sing it, all right? Go ahead. My head is stuck in the clouds She begs me to come down Says, boy, quit fooling around I told her, I love the view from up here Warm sun and wind in my ear will watch Watch the world from above As it turns to the rhythm of love String to the strum, a beautiful song to be sung. But she's got two eyes deep like the sea that roll back when she's laughing at me. She rises up like the tide. The moment it lifts me. So fine, we may only 
the gentleman that's singing that is his name is Tim Warwick, and uh, he sings tenor in a quartet, or one of our international champion quartets called Vocal Spectrum. Uh, check him out on YouTube; they're really awesome, and uh, he's got a great site with lots of stuff. So let's just go right from the tip top here, all right? And uh, I, you know the drill, right? Just pick a part you like and sing it. <laughs> Read the spots off of it and go to town. That's how we do it here, right? Good. Uh, give me an A flat there, will you? Anybody have a pitch pipe out there? No. I give you, I give you a couple for nothing, right? Ready and do 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 do. So when, when we point to them, they're going to shout out the word where. Oh. So this is really, okay, here we go. 
Now, on the count of three, ladies and gentlemen. One, Hang on, two, I'm sorry, what? So woman, why are we doing this? Look, Costello, take this somewhere else. I mean, I'm trying to get people. I don't know what you're doing here. You're messing with my stuff. So please. So anyway, let's try it, ladies and gentlemen. On the count of three, just shout out the word where. Here we go. One, two, three. Where? Oh, that's good. That's that very is. good, very good. We're going to do it one more time, and we are taping an album. This, this, uh, so we want to be part of that, right? So, so here we go. We're going to do it for the record now, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, for the album, right? Okay, yeah. Album. Okay, so, all right. Uh, we're gonna, one more time for the album. Here we go. We're gonna, it's going to be a long album. Okay, so we're going to do one more time. Here we go. One, two, three. folk tunes written back in the early 60s, you know, um, artists like Bob Dylan, groups like the Mamas and the Papas, like paved the way for some great folk music. But there was one folk band that was just tremendous back in that time and, and really, really led that whole era. So let me set the scene for y'all. You're in New York City, it's about 1961. You're heading over to a coffee house with some friends to see a hootenanny. A group walks in, three guys, called the Kingston Trio. 
and they do one of their most popular songs of the day. Scotch and soda, mud in your eye, baby do I feel high on me, oh my, do I feel high, dry martini. And still be on the wagon. All I need is one of your smiles, sunshine of your. When you get to those notes that you can't sing, just try to whistle them. Oh, you you know, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing at all. But I tell you what, I gotta, I gotta just say one thing here before we continue. And I think it's, I think it's really important that these people know a little bit about, uh, about us and our, and our society and, and Harmony Foundation. Yes. Because uh, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Harmony Foundation is a group that, that I work for, and and what we do is is we raise funds to make sure that the kids get a chance to sing. Uh, we believe the world's a better place when people are singing, and I think you'd all agree with that, wouldn't you? Bye. Just a few years ago, the Harmony Foundation thought, wouldn't it be great? If we could have camps and workshops all over the country that gave kids the opportunity to sing. And in, in, 19, or in, in 2008, we had 4,000 kids in those camps. And I'm happy to say today that because of the generosity of our donors, this year we're going to have 15,000 kids in those camps. Not only do we help to get kids in camps, but we work with music educators to make sure that they have resources, that they have, um, you know, uh, extended educational opportunities to get those credits that you have to get, right? And, uh, and, and also a chance for you uh, to give some feedback and, and get your kids involved in programs. And I just want to tell you a really quick story about a, a young man. Uh, this young man's name is Tyler. And Tyler, uh, he had everything all figured out. He was, he was just about to turn 16, and he had life all figured out. Uh, unfortunately for him, uh, things weren't going well in Tyler's life. Both of his parents were in jail, and he had come to the conclusion that he was going to quit school as soon as he turned 16. 
Well, his music teacher found out about this. And she went to him and said, Tyler, I hear that you're going to quit school. And he says, yeah, there's nothing here for me. She said, well, before you do that, would you please just go to this harmony workshop and just take part in that and then you can make your decision. Well, he went to that workshop and there wasn't a single person in there that cared about Tyler's baggage. All they cared about was, dude, you've got an awesome bass voice. And he found a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose that he had never experienced before. And so he went back to that teacher and he said, I want more of that. And she said, I'll give you more of that if you promise you'll stay in school. And at that moment, he agreed to do that. And so she took him to a local barbershop chapter and introduced him and he started singing with them. And a couple of years later, he had actually won one of the competitions in a quartet. And he went on to be a music composition and history major at the college. And now he's going to go out and shape lives of other young people. And it was because of that decision of that one educator to make a difference that Tyler's life was saved. And he stood in front of a, a, an ACDA group, much like yourselves, at his state organization, and told them that if it weren't for his teacher and that camp, that he'd surely be either dead or in jail today. We know what the pressures of the world are. We know the challenges that we all have and that we face in our schools with budget cuts and uh, all of those obstacles that seem to be in our way so that we, we can do nothing except get around them to try and teach music. Well, I'm telling you that you are an absolute blessing for these young people. Thank you for what you do. And for all of you looking to go into music, you're going to have a chance to shape those lives just like that as well. You're going to come out of your teaching career with hundreds and hundreds of stories of Tyler's that you've changed their life. The world's a better place when people are singing. And thank you for being a part of shaping the future of our world, if you will. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I know that we've had a little bit of controversy up here on this stage. It's not well, you know, it's this Jared over here, our bass singer. Assistance. He seems to like to critique everybody. Jared and for some reason, he gets uh, through with no critique at all. But we're going to change that tonight. Because we're going to have him sing a solo and have all of you critique him. How about that? Uh, you up for that? Uh, all right. I'll good. Come on. About, uh, who likes the Beatles? <laughs> we don't know any of their stuff, so we can't do that. So. Uh, <laughs> So I know that you love some Johnny Cash. Yes, I, I do yes, love Johnny, Johnny Cash. Uh, Ring of Fire. Down, 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 when the flames went higher. I went down, 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 my pants were on fire. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Roll, baby! Yeah. <laughs> what is that? This is a little PSA I do for everyone. <laughs> we sing, we sing, and we, we take care of you. That song is way too easy. Pants are on fire, you stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> I guess no one wants to have burn bikes. They don't want that. So, anyway. Are we done with the solo now? I think this The song done. is way too easy, and it looks a little painful, too. So, we're going to... How about that, that song with all the cities in it? That song called I've Been Everywhere. That's perfect, right? <laughs> It is a great song, but it's, it's we haven't done that before, and we don't, you know, I haven't rehearsed it, you know, so that's kind of silly for these people to, to go through something like that, you know. Well, you haven't rehearsed anything we've done tonight, so why stop there? Well, I mean, just saying, it's, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's yeah, a little encouragement. How about some John? You got it? I'll try. I'll try. I'll give my own for, for these people. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was toting my pack along a dusty with a mucker road when along came a semi with a hind canvas covered load. If you're going to tiddle do do No, stop it! You can't expect me to just roll out the 
the Sioux song. Listen, I I knew something like this was gonna happen. <laughs> it's cheating. It's, it's not okay. Cheating. It's not cheating. Let me give you a, one little help here with the first, first verse. Okay, okay. all right. Here we go. Oh, this will get us through. Okay. Right. Here we go. Okay. We'll get it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> well, I was toting my pack along a dusty Winnemucca road when along came a semi with a hind canvas covered load. If you're going to Winnemucca Mac with me, you can ride. So I climbed into the cabin and I settled down inside. He asked me if I'd seen a road with so much dust and sand, and I said, Listen, bud, I traveled every road in this here land. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Cross the desert, spare, man. Breathe the mountain air, man. I've traveled, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere, everywhere. I've been to Reno, Chicago, Fargo, Minnesota, Buffalo, Toronto, Winslow, Sarasota. Tulsa, Ottawa, Oklahoma, Tampa, Panama, Matthew, Palomo, Bangor, Baltimore, Salvador, Emerald, Tobacilla, Baron, Berlin, Padilla, Rama, Killer, Ivan, and In the Black, Black Rock, Little Rock, Appaloosa, Hennessy, Tennessee, Tennessee, Chief, Big Real Estate, Federal Lake, Driver Lake, for Pete's sake, I've been everywhere. Sheffield, Jacksonville, Waterloo, Costa Rica, Pittsfield, Springfield, Bakersfield, Shreveport, Hackensack, Cadillac, Pomelac, Davenport, Idaho, Jericho, Warren, Dina, Pasadena, Catalina, see what I mean, sir? I've been everywhere, man. To, uh, to our last number, but before we, we close things up here, I just wanted to thank the ICDA for having us be a part of your event. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing many of you tomorrow at our, at our uh, two workshops at 10 and 11. Um, and also, I uh, want to say what a, just an absolute joy it was to share this stage with, with, your, with your Iowa All-State Jazz Choir. My gosh, those, those young people were awesome. Just great. Congratulations. Thank you, and, and I also wanted to just uh, give a quick shout out to the Des Moines chapter of the Barbershop Harmony Society for helping make it possible for us to be here. So thank you guys, you've been great hosts too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we, uh, we know that there are all kinds of genres of music that are sung, and uh, one of the uh, wonderful things about barbershop harmony, one of America's art forms, is that you can wrap a lot of things into barbershop. And you can do folk music, as we've shown, you can do straight stuff, you can do Beatles, you can do, you know, rhythm of love, all of that stuff. But one of another great American genres is gospel. 
and gospel works in the barbershop style too. And we'd like to sing a great old gospel tune for y'all to close out our show. And just again, thank you for being such a great audience. Hope you have a wonderful week. And thanks for spending some time with us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Ship comes in, well I'll leave this world of sin and go sailing through.